Russia, pro-Russian separatists, and Ukraine must adhere to an immediate ceasefire. Evidence must not be tampered with. Investigators need to access the crash site and the solemn task of returning those who were lost on board the plane to their loved ones needs to go forward immediately. The president talking about the aftermath with that plane crash in eastern Ukraine just moments ago as we watched it live here on Outnumbered. We are back here uh, with the show now, and we're going to go on talking about this. There was one thing that the president said that really stood out. Don't know if you caught it, uh, but he said about President Putin of Russia, he actually has the most power, control over the situation. We've got Senator Fred Thompson, who is our hashtag one lucky guy, helping us handle some breaking news today. Senator, your thoughts about that? Who's in control? Putin. Well, of course. Everybody knows that. Um, sounds like kind of like the commercial. Everybody knows that. Um, and that's, that's as tough as he got, I guess. You know, the problem is, I mean, uh, Kristen is right. It, 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 the President of the United States needs to be careful and measured. Uh, if he comes back later, if he came back later when he's got all of his facts together mm -hmm. uh, and comes with a, a strong statement, people look to Reagan's statement, uh, you know, in 1983 and all, you know, and it's outrageous. And the, this, this is what happens when you have dictators running things. This is what happens when you don't have a, a free country that, 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 that moves into territory and, and tries to take over uh, other governments. You know, this is, this is the kind of thing that we're dealing with. None of that. It's that Putin has the authority to do this, and I really uh, wish he would. If, if, if you, you live by the, the news cycle, you die by the news cycle. And he always he tries to dominate, you know, the media. And yet when it comes at a time like this, it may be early, and it may be unfair to presidents uh, nowadays, but the world is waiting for him to express uh, something. And, uh, and what he expressed is a police report, not a statement of the President of the United States about how outrageous this is and whether it's a functionary of the, uh, of the uh, Russian separatists in, uh, in uh, eastern Ukraine uh, uh, who has been supported there, been uniformed, been furnished with equipment by Russia. Everybody, everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. Or whether it's the Russians themselves. Right. Yeah, and some, 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 yeah, some, uh, well, either way. I that mean, some outrage that, that, uh, that, that this is happening. And then uh, this, what an opportunity to get, mm -hmm. the, to get the world while the whole world is watching is on, on our side yeah. to get some help. I mean, at, at least the Europeans, maybe, who don't seem to be able to help is themselves. Is he missing an opportunity? Yes. Yeah. Well, I wanted to get Kirsten back in on that because you were making that point before the break and you had talked to your sources as the president was speaking um, that that potentially this was just Russia was what you were throwing out there and not the pro-Russian separatists. Right. Um, I was talking to Brett Stevens from the Wall Street Journal this morning. He was pointing out that yesterday we saw restraint from global leaders, but not from Putin himself. He said, mm -hmm. quote, the world should be asking why he was jumping to conclusions so quickly. Right. Well, I mean, this just reiterates what a rogue actor he is, I think. You know, he's not somebody who you can really deal with because, look, at a minimum, he is supplying these weapons that, that should not be supplied to rebels. And even, you know, in the debate over Syria, the U.S. has considered giving, you know, they want weapons so the Syrian rebels can take down Assad's aircrafts. They're not supplying they these kind weapons. of weapons to them because they know they could shoot down airliners. And so it's, a, it's been a real serious debate of what kind of weapons they can give them. Clearly, Putin doesn't have that kind of debate. You know, he, he, you know, if he is the one who either gave this to them or they had to steal it from somebody and someone had to train them to use it. So I, I don't think that he's somebody who is a really, you know, a reasonable actor on the world stage. You know, some of the reports that are coming out, and, and you and I were talking before the show, too, about how many... Uh, pieces of equipment or, or pieces of evidence may have been taken from that scene potentially. Yeah. We don't know that yet. We're, we're still waiting to, to see what the evidence will stack up like Kimberly. But there are reports that some of the rebels may have walked away with at least one of the black boxes. Absolutely. And, and that they could be headed back to Russia. And you heard the president sort of make an inference to that saying that we need to make sure that none of the evidence here is tampered with. And as we were on the air when this was happening uh, yesterday, we talked about that, that being a forensic rich environment, the plane site, the crash right where it happened to be able to get all the information and make sure that nothing was taken from the plane or the crash debris because it's so important in piecing it together in terms of who shot it 
down, where it came from, specifically what type of weapons were used, and whether there are any communications from the cockpit back to control, etc. What transpired in those crucial moments? And now we see perhaps strong evidence that someone has come in, removed evidence that could directly perhaps tie Russia right. to this. So let, let's take it further then. If it in fact happens that one of those black boxes is, is being reported, but, but we don't have independent confirmation on its way to Russia. gone back to Russia, what does that do with the political conversation between us and, and Putin? <laughs> well, you, that's a good question. You, you got to put this whole thing, I think, in the larger context and why it's so disappointing. Uh, that the president chooses to say the things that he did uh, when he had this opportunity. Um, the reset, the moving mm -hmm. the missiles out of Eastern Europe when Russia said, mm -hmm. told him to, uh, the whisper to Medvedev that uh, tell uh, you know, Putin that I can be more flexible after the election, mm -hmm. uh, the refusal to uh, furnish arms to the Ukrainians, uh, on and on and on, the, the getting, ru ru letting Russia bail us out, you know, in Syria. Our relationship with Russia, in, in the eyes of the rest of the world, I'm afraid, looks uh, to be one of, of subservience almost, or weakness and accommodation. And uh, you, you get the feeling that uh, there, there's a lack of appreciation of the world that we live in and what we're having to deal with here. Well, and we heard it from the president, and I say it again. He has the most control over the situation, talking about Putin. It's great to have Senator Fred Thompson here on this day.